Okay, here's a shot of my little furnace in action. Uh, really nice aluminium. As you can see, it's just a simple hearth made out of some um, cement blocks um, with a uh, metal barbecue grate um, supporting a melting pot with a handle welded onto it. It's made out of some um, big diameter pipe with the end um, closed off. And uh, it's just a matter of uh, Rolling down the aluminium now. You can see some aluminium in the pot in there. It's uh, it's already melting down. been going for about uh, oh, 10 minutes probably. Right, well, here's the gear we want to make a blank for. Uh, here's a tin can, which as you can see is pretty good, pretty close. You want to make it larger than the uh, the blank needs to be, um, so you can machine it back in case you get any imperfections. So that's what we'll pour our aluminium into when the melt's finished. Right, you see I've got the tin can on the top of the... Uh, the furnace where the hot air comes out to pre-warm it before I pour the aluminium so just leave it there and when we pour the aluminium it won't be going into a cold surface so it won't uh, uh, put a skin on the outside edge of it quite so readily. Okay now we'll add a bit of uh, common table salt as a, uh, as a flux uh, while it's melting so um, I'm putting in about uh, half, a, half a teaspoonful. Right, well now we'll uh, skim off the, uh, the slag on the top and we'll add the degassing agent, which is a bit of baking soda.
Right, well here's our freshly poured slug of aluminium in the in the tin. I just cool it down in the last little bit with the hose, but uh, you never want to get molten aluminium anywhere near water. Um, but uh, when it's cooled down, if the last little bit doesn't hurt, put the hose on it and that'll just help it separate from the tin. But make sure it's three quarters cooled down. But definitely, definitely do not do it when it's red hot. Okay, so now we'll get the tin off. It looks a bit daggy on the top. There was a bit of crud came out with it, which I sort of scooped off. But we're not going to use that. There's plenty of aluminium, so we'll go right down with this. But anyway, remove the tin. Some gloves on so you don't cut yourself. Get out the surgical instruments. Gently rip it off. As you get going on this, it's, uh, it comes off pretty easy. got some air bubbles in this lot so I don't know how good it's going to be it's uh, pretty rough looking I might not have got it quite molten enough well we'll see how it turns out it's got a lot of bloody porosity in it mmm we'll see how it goes Right, well you can see here uh, where I'm machining back that, uh, that daggy looking blank how we've got beautiful uh, aluminium in the middle with no porosity in it whatsoever, no, no gas holes but around the outside edge you can see we've got some bubbles um, now they might machine away but they might not so that's why you always want to use a tin that's larger than the, than the gear you, you want to make so Okay, this gear may, this blank may not be quite good enough for uh, the diameter I want. I'll see how much is uh, left after I machine away the, uh, <coughs> the bubbles. But uh, even if it's no good for the uh, size I want, well, it's always going to be okay for a smaller gear, so it's no harm done. Um, but that's the thing that when you pour it, you never know quite for sure whether or not you're going to get any bubbles. And uh, as you can see in the middle, it's beautiful. Uh, great job. But... Uh, it's just that when it went in the tin, um, for some reason, uh, we've got some air bubbles in it. Oh well, we'll uh, machine away the outside edge and we'll see what it looks like uh, when we're taking some more off. Here's our gear. Let's see how she uh, she goes. I think we'll be all right. I think we've got enough there. Beautiful. We've got room to room to spare. So that uh, that'll come up as a good blank, no problem whatsoever. So now we just uh, machine away the uh, the stuff we don't want, and uh, we'll finish up with a with a blank, ready to go. 
pretty good. Okay, well, we've uh, pretty well got the blank to where we want it to be, so out of that really crappy looking piece of uh, casting, uh, we've got what will be a perfectly excellent gear blank. <laughs> you wouldn't do better if you bought one, that is absolutely magnificent bit of aluminium, right? There's no porosity in there whatsoever. Okay, and our, our gear is supposed to be 73.7 and our blank is 76.54 so we got room to play with but we can still take some more off so what we'll do now uh, and the thickness is supposed to be 10 mil and if we measure it it's down to Ten point oh six, so that's pretty close. Uh, so it's ready for uh, centre boring um, mounting, and then uh, turn it down to the exact external diameter, and uh, we're ready to go cut and feed. I won't be doing that in this video, but this is just to show you how easy it is to make a perfectly good blank out of a really good quality aluminium but you wouldn't do better if you bought it and there you go look at that uh, how's that <clears throat> how that horrible looking piece of uh, aluminium that came out the tin is that and uh, okay we wasted quite a bit it wasn't the best pour in the world but it was uh, more than good enough and uh, there you go cast your own uh, aluminium uh, gear blanks and uh, but that cost you a bean. Okay, see you next time. Cheers.